Today, I'm going to show you the best settings to use to export your videos for Instagram stories using Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, we're going to skip the introduction today and get right to it. Now, I feel like this is a question I get asked quite often. I get tons of DMs from people saying, how do you make your videos look good on Instagram stories? Now, I know it's not a super clear cut thing or, uh, you know, I, I feel like Instagram hasn't provided enough guidelines on the best way to export your videos. And I think it has something to do with the fact that there are just so many different video editing programs out there. But there are still quite a few different settings you can use in your editing software to make your video look great and optimize it for Instagram stories. So why don't we just jump on over to Adobe Premiere Pro and get right to it. Okay, so first things first, we're going to go ahead and open Adobe Premiere Pro. Then we're gonna hit new project and we're gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna just call it Instagram stories templates. Okay. Yeah, you can save that wherever you want and just hit okay. So now Premiere's just opened up and everything's ready to go, but there are no files or anything there yet. So before you actually start importing any videos into this project, there are two things to keep in mind. The first is if you actually shot a video in portrait orientation. So this would be a video that is shot specifically for Instagram stories. So you want it to be in that portrait tall aspect ratio. So this is usually at 1080 pixels wide by 1920 pixels high. So once again, this is normally content that you have shot specifically to be played on something like a smartphone or on Instagram stories directly. The other option is when you have created a video, let's say like, you know, a normal YouTube video. So this is in the normal horizontal wide aspect ratio. So this is when you would want to repurpose this video and crop it to fit your normal Instagram stories portrait orientation. But either way, after we've opened up and created this new project, we need to create a new sequence now. So we're gonna go up to file, hit new, and then click on sequence. So we're gonna go over to the settings section over here and we're gonna create our sequence. So it doesn't really matter what is checked off for editing mode here because as soon as you start changing all the other settings, that's gonna become irrelevant. So by choosing one of these, it is setting very specific things here. So I just normally start it off with something like custom or the RE Cinema one and just kind of go from there. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to focus on is the time base here or the frames per second. Now normally for the cinematic frame rate, we normally do 24 or 23.976 frames per second. But for Instagram stories, Instagram is actually using 30 frames per second. So even if you output a video at 24 frames per second, it's gonna be converted on Instagram's end to make it be playing at 30 frames per second. So this doesn't mean you have to shoot your video or have it in 30 frames per second. So if you do just have a 24 frames per second video clip and wanna put it in here, I'll show you what happens next. But before we get there, we're gonna just go ahead and choose 30 frames per second. Then we're gonna to wanna to set the frame size. So the first option is the horizontal. So that is gonna be 1080 pixels wide and we're gonna set it to 1920 pixels high. Then under pixel aspect ratio, we're gonna make sure it's set to square pixels. Under fields, make sure it's set to no fields, progressive scan, and display format is fine in 30 FPS time code. We can leave the audio sample rate as is and the audio display format as is as well. Then once we go down here, we can give this sequence a name. So we can call it Instagram Stories Template. And we can actually go ahead and save this preset so you have it for future use. So this will allow you to just use it, you know, anytime you want to create an Instagram Stories video. You don't have to recreate a sequence and do this from scratch, inputting all these numbers and values again every single time. So hit save preset. And once again, we can just name it Instagram Stories Template and hit OK. So you will notice at the bottom here for available presets, when you are creating a new sequence, you will now see under custom Instagram stories templates. So you can go ahead and click OK. And now it's created your first sequence. So you will notice this right here is pretty much the portrait orientation of something like an iPhone screen or any other smartphone that is in that, you know, resolution or aspect ratio. Okay, so the next step is to import our video files into our project. So I'm gonna open up my folder and I've actually got a video clip here that I shot specifically as an Instagram Stories promo for my Motivation Monday series that I've just started. We're gonna go ahead and just drag this clip into my project over here. And now it's been imported. 
So then we're gonna go ahead and just drag now the imported file into the timeline. Now once you do that, there's gonna be this pop-up error that comes up saying clip mismatch warning. So it says this clip does not match the sequence of settings. Change sequence to match the clip settings. And you're gonna say, just keep the existing settings. So basically because the sequence we created is in a 30 frames per second timeline, and my video clip was shot at 24 frames per second, it's asking if you wanna change the settings of the sequence to match the video clip. But that's not what we wanna do in this case. We wanna make sure that the video clip is changing its frame rate to match that of the sequence. So we hit keep existing settings. Okay, so now our clip is in here. Now, as you'll notice, my clip is the wrong way. It is, you know, zoomed in, it's sideways, so we're gonna have to rotate this clip first. So we're gonna go to our effects control, make sure our clip is selected, and then under rotation, we're gonna do minus 90. Now, if your clip is the opposite way, you would just do 90. So now my clip is in the right orientation, but it is still zoomed in too much. That's because the sequence is a 1080p sequence, and I believe I shot this in 4K, so my footage is too big. So I'm going to try making this smaller, I'm going to type in 50. There you go, that looks like it's the right size. So now we can just scrub through our video, and you'll notice everything is all good. Alright, everything's in frame, everything's good to go. So I would cut up these clips the way I want to, which I'm going to just Skip ahead for now for the sake of this video, since that's not what you're here for. It is now time to export the video. So I'm gonna set my in and out points. Just gonna drag this to the end there. Okay, so now we're ready to export our video. So if we go on up to file, and we hit export, and then media, the export settings dialog box will pop up now. So this is what you've been waiting for. These are the actual settings that you're gonna to need to export this video so it's optimized for Instagram stories. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna leave the format in the H.264 format, and we can leave the preset to match source high bitrate. We can go ahead and give our file a name. So I'm just gonna leave it at the default right now, Instagram stories template. Make sure you choose an appropriate location and hit save. You wanna make sure export video and export audio are checked off. And then we're gonna go down to the video settings. So because match source was checked off up here, it is gonna pull everything from the sequence. So it's got the proper resolution there, has a proper frame rate, so all that is set. Then we're gonna make sure we go ahead and check off render at maximum depth, okay? Then we will scroll down some more until we get to the bitrate settings. So we're gonna choose for bitrate encoding, VBR one pass. Then for the target bitrate, we're gonna choose the maximum of 10 and then leave the maximum bitrate at 12. Then towards the bottom here, you'll see use maximum render quality. So you wanna make sure that's checked off. And finally, where it says use previews, you wanna make sure that it's not checked off because if you had created a preview file when you were previewing your video clip in your timeline and it wasn't necessarily in full resolution, it would use those preview files to export your video, which would make your video clip look compressed and you know, not in really great quality. So you wanna make sure that it's not checked off. Then you'll also notice there's an estimated file size at the bottom. So, you know, that's not really too important, but we don't want that to be too big. Now, I didn't make sure that this clip was only 15 seconds long, which is what Instagram story supports per clip. But with the newer Instagram features, I believe Instagram cuts up your video clip into individual stories now if it is longer than 15 seconds. So this video is longer. So I think Instagram will just do the job for me and split it up. But once again, you just wanna make sure that the estimated file size isn't too big because then that means Instagram will be compressing your videos quite a bit. Then we can go ahead and click export. Now, this is the exact same process that you'll have to follow if you had a video that was shot in the horizontal aspect ratio. So all everything in terms of settings and everything else we just did is exactly the same. The only difference is you will just have to crop and frame your video clip accordingly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull in a different video clip that I have over here. So I'm gonna actually pull in my main Motivation Monday video file import it into the project, and then we're gonna drop that into the timeline. So if I scrub over somewhere in the video, you notice once again, it's just you know fully zoomed in and it's not cropped necessarily in the way that I want it to be cropped. So 
you know, there's two different things you can do here. You could really bring it down and just match the width of the composition if you want to have, you know, the whole width of the video showing in your Instagram stories. But what you'll notice is there's a black background. So that will show up in your story. So if you don't want that to happen, that's when you would just play around with zooming in this footage and framing it accordingly. So I would make sure I just frame this all the way up to the proper height. And I'm a little offset, so I'll just shift that over a bit. But you can just basically play your video out like this. So once again, if you have a clip like that, you just want to frame it accordingly. So in my video here, it's pretty much a single angle. Uh, the camera doesn't move a lot. So it's I'm pretty sure I can just leave it at that one position and it's good to go. But in a lot of other videos, you know, from different camera angle or different clip to clip in that one video, um, the positioning might be off. So you might have to start cutting up your video, repositioning each little section to make sure that the whole video is centered in the frame. Then to export it, it's the exact same thing. You would set your in and out points, go back on up to file, export media, and then you would just input the same settings that we just went over. And there you have it. It is literally as simple as that. Then all you have to do is send the file over to your phone, open up Instagram, go to Instagram stories, and upload the video directly there. All right guys, well there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something new here and now, and hopefully your videos will look awesome once they're posted to Instagram stories. If you have any questions or have any comments or concerns, please feel free to comment down below in this video. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell notification icon to get notified every single time I drop new videos like this one. There's lots more cool stuff coming your way, so make sure you stay tuned. My name is Alex Perry, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.